Hi there crafty friends, this is Irene with Artemis Made and I'm so glad you're spending time with me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today we're going to walk through making a spanner card, which is what I did for episode 198 of Craft Roulette this past week's episode. So here you see the different crafty goodies that I used for my card. Uh, not all of them, but most of them. These are from the new Simon Says Stamp card kit called Love Story. It is still available now if you're interested. It's full of so many beautiful pretty thingies all the pretty thingies <laughs> so it's got you know pattern paper that you can see here lots of pattern paper it's a six by eight pad from simple stories and it's got ephemera it's got some sparklies it's just it's a great card kit highly recommend so it also includes some cardstock and so here i am using the i believe it's cotton candy cardstock i want to say that's the color 110 pound and this is going to be the base of my spanner card so because my ephemera that I'm going to be using as my centerpiece on my card is on the larger side, I actually went ahead and did an A7 card. That is basically a 5x7. I think it's 5 and an 8x7, but still 5x7 makes it easier. So I cut my base panel down to 10 inches long by 7 inches wide. Then you can see me here, I am scoring it at 5 inches long and then folding it. So now if the idea of a spanner card seems a little bit intimidating, I completely understand. I was a little bit freaked out about it at first too, but it ended up being so much fun that I made two of these. I really did. You'll see it at the end of this video because I'm also going to include some inspiration from the Simon Says Stamp card kit for the month. So anyway, the spanner card is not as tricky as it seems, but this part can be a little bit intense, <laughs> a little bit. So what we're going to do here is what I call half cuts. There may be a more technical name. I don't know. Uh, maybe the scientific card community can inform me, but basically all I'm doing is I'm cutting an inch and a half from each side of my card up into the score line. Those are going to be the little flaps that are going to help form the spanner element of this card. So you can see I'm basically cutting to that score line, but not beyond it. So feel free to chuckle at me. I thought that looked like a little piggy, so I couldn't help playing with its flappy little ears. It was pink. I don't know. It had ears. It had a little snout. It looked like a piggy to me. Go figure. I, I don't know. I'd been, I'd been making a lot of cards that day. That's my only excuse. So here I am taking my pattern paper from the card kit. And the color palette for this week's project for Craft Roulette is actually butterfly. So I thought it was great that there were butterflies on the paper. And I just used the color palette that was built into the pattern paper uh, as my color palette for this card project. So what I did here is I took that pattern piece and I cut it into four pieces of four and three quarters length by one and a quarter width. I need four pieces of that. Now this is my second piece of pattern paper that coordinates with the butterfly paper. And I'm cutting that just one piece of four and three quarters long by three and three quarters wide. And that is going to be kind of the background of my centerpiece on this card. So what you just saw me do there is cut the spanner strip of my card. This is going to be what actually helps make it a spanner card. I used acetate because I really like to be able to see through the card spanner strip. Um, I want to make it look as if my centerpiece is floating. So for that reason, I really like using acetate. So there I cut it at one and a quarter long by six inches wide. Because remember, this is a seven inch wide card, an A7 card. So I basically cut my spanner strip to be one inch shorter than the width of the card. And then I put a couple of pieces of double sided tape on either end. I measured it just to make sure that it was going to be relatively centered. I kind of eyeballed it, kind of measured it, uh, but I really like where it ended up. And that's going to be the part that now holds my centerpiece. So now you're going to see me start to adhere my pattern paper to the card itself. Really easy to get a card to come together when you're using pattern paper and ephemera. No die cutting involved, just some regular cutting and adhering and you're good to go. I love cards that are this quick and easy. So here I put down the background using that second pattern paper that I had cut out. And then I'm taking my strips that I cut and I'm going over the top of my acetate. 
you don't have to do it that way. You could certainly put your spanner strip literally all the way across, but I kind of like hiding the ends of it. And then, like I mentioned earlier, having my centerpiece look like it's floating. So you can see the acetate behind the piece, but just looking at the card, it just looks like it's kind of hanging out there in space. I like that. Now, the one kind of not great element of using acetate there is that when you open the card, your recipient will see whatever is on the back of your centerpiece. So for that reason, I just cut one simple little strip of double-sided tape, and then I put it on the strip, and I'm adhering my element where I want on that strip. So all they're gonna see when they open this card is that little tiny strip on the back there. And it is clear, I mean, you can see it, but it is clear. So it's not messy, it's not distracting, it is perfectly fine. Now those other two strips that I cut are gonna go on the inside of this card. So the inside of the card is kind of a relative term when you're talking about spanner cards because you can actually see a couple more insides. <laughs> that sounds confusing, right? Well, basically what I'm what I mean by that is when you open your first spanner flap, you're going to see that center, that background, and then you can open the background and then you can get to the actual inside of your card. So there are a few flipping elements to doing a spanner card. And speaking of the interior of the card, one thing which we should be mindful of whenever we're using colored cardstock bases is that we need to make sure the recipient will be able to read our inside greeting. So here I am using a piece of white cardstock, which is the same dimension as the background piece, that second pattern paper. And this is gonna be where I write my message. Granted, I used a light colored cardstock for my base, so it shouldn't have been too big of a problem. I could have used a black pen, but I just really like the cohesive look of adding that white cardstock. So now you see I'm playing around with some sentiments and I've decided I'm going to put, and they lived on the outside of my card, and then they're gonna open the, sp the spanner flap and on the inside, uh, on that background, it's gonna say happily ever after, and then they can open that flap and the inside will be the greeting. So I went with this particular sentiment because I really like that the centerpiece I used is that journal. It's got some writing in it and it looks, you know, like somebody's writing their story or their love story, which of course is what the card kit is called. So I just, I just think it's really sweet to think that somebody's writing their love story down. So now you're going to see me do something a little bit silly. So I put this glue on to give myself a little bit of float time, little wiggle room, and then I stuck my fingers in it. Why? Uh, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm just really stuck on card making. <laughs> I know that was that was terrible. But have you ever done that? Have you ever stuck your fingers in the glue right after you put the glue down? Am I the only one? I, I, I hope not. But well, I hope I am for your sake. But still, you know, it's part of the process. We do silly things and we just got to laugh about it and move right along. It's okay, right? So now I have got my exterior sentiment down and I glued my interior sentiment. So now it says, and they lived happily ever after, which I think is just a really sweet sentiment. And again, it really matches the love story theme. So I kept looking at this and thinking, well, what does every good love story need? It needs some hearts. <laughs> I really, really thought these hearts were so adorable. They've got writing on them. I saw a little bit of Mr. Darcy thrown on there. So I definitely fell in love with the little hearts. I thought they were really cute and it just fit. So I went ahead and decided to place them around my journal. And I was trying to figure out how do I kind of cover up the little bit of edges that were visible from the happily ever after sentiment. I didn't really want that to show very much from the outside of the card. So the hearts do a twofold purpose. They add to the love story and they help cover the interior sentiment just a little bit. So I placed them strategically and then I glued part of them and I used foam squares on another part of them. And that way they are kind of elevated in one part, but they tuck underneath that centerpiece. So there you go. Isn't that cute? I really, really like having those hearts. I just thought they were adorable. So in addition to the hearts, I decided that I needed a little bit of shine, a little bit of shimmer. So I was really excited to remember that I had these vintagey looking gold pearls uh, from Trinity Stamps. And you know what? They just kind of went with that vintage love story feel that is the Simple Stories ephemera and paper pack. So I, they kind of look a little bit burnished, um, a little bit faded, but you know, vintage. And it's just, it's really pretty. And I think it just fits the whole, the whole theme. 
So this is the finished card. And before we talk about the different elements, um, if you enjoyed this video, if you like this kind of content and want to see some more tutorials and just different pretty papers and pretty die cuts and car crafty card making, then it would really mean a lot to me if you would like the video, give it a thumbs up, um, and even consider subscribing. Uh, every time somebody does that, it helps YouTube know that this is content worth watching and maybe it'll help somebody else who is on their crafty journey. I really appreciate it. So let's talk about the parameters for this week's craft roulette. Of course, it is a spanner card. And you saw me wiggle my fingers there because I really like that floating element. So the spanner card is where you have that spanning element across your card. Now on my particular spanner card, I used acetate like we talked about, and there's the acetate strip right there. I like that because of the whole floating element concept. Uh, the colors were butterfly and I used that pattern paper as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the element was centerpiece, which is my journal, my little love story, and the random was dial. And the little pocket watch on the journal has a di uh, dial. So I was really excited that that centerpiece works so well together. So there's the card. I really hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate you being here to watch it. Now this was the other card that I mentioned when I made, uh, that I made on my live. I really, really enjoyed doing the spanner card project and I just had to make another one. So now I'm kind of excited to make a few more. On this one, I fussy cut some of the pattern paper. Uh, on this one, I used uh, some foil and did my own little cutouts here and there. This one was really fun because it's an interactive card and this is what the interactive element looks like. You pull it out and it says, our love story is my favorite. Now this one, I, I wasn't sure how I felt about this. I feel like it was a, an idea, but I didn't fully flesh it out. This, however, is my absolute favorite. It's like Polaroid pictures of pattern paper. I just thought it was really pretty and I, I hope you like it too. So thank you so much again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed watching this card video and I hope you got a little bit inspired to use your Simon Says Stamp card kit or to maybe pop over there and check it out. So thank you again. Really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you grab some paper and craft something that really makes you smile. Take care. See you next time. Bye.